Hi, my name is Gudrun from GE Designs. In this video, I'd like to talk about quilt backs. I've always gotten a lot of questions about my quilt backings, as I like to piece my backings, sometimes from some of my leftovers from the quilt, as well as bigger pieces of fabric from my stash. I'd also like to show you how to calculate the most economical way of buying yardage for a quilt, just like I do in my patterns. So let's start with the yardage. When I buy yardage for a quilt back, I want to be as economical as possible. I don't like having a lot of waste, extra backing material left over, because I like to save that money and spend it on fabric for my next quilt top. Now, I'd rather just put an extra seam in there. And so this is the best way that I calculate my yardage. First thing to pay attention to is whether you are quilting your quilt yourself on your domestic machine or are you taking it to a long arm quilter? If you're taking it to a long arm quilter, you have to take into effect that the long arm quilter likes to have the quilt back at least three to four inches larger on all four sides than the finished quilt top. So if I am knowing that I'm going to take it to a long arm quilter, I just add that to my size of the quilt top and make my calculations that way. Now, if I'm going to quilt my quilt myself on my domestic machine, that means I'm gonna baste it myself. And sometimes we can save a little bit of yardage that way because we don't need those extra inches if we're just doing it on our own machines. So let's start with the smallest quilt projects like a table runner. So if a table runner, they can be varying sizes a little bit. If they are shorter than 42 inches, then I usually just buy the width of the table runner and then add a few inches, about four inches to be plenty. Now, if they are longer than 42 inches, but no wider than 20, I like to buy half the length plus the four inches. So for example, if my runner is 56 inches, I just add that or round that up to 60 by adding those little few inches and then that means I need to buy 30 inches of fabric. And then I take that fabric and I cut it on the fold and then I put it back, sew it back together along that short side. So let me just show you how I do that. So here I have, let's say I have a piece of fabric that I have bought half the length of the runner. This is a smaller scale, of course, because we'll pretend this came off the bolt like this and this is half the length of the runner. So what I do, I just cut the fabric on the fold right along that fold. And that way, making sure that both ends are kind of um, trimmed up straight. And then I'm just gonna sew the short sides together. So putting one seam and pressing it, and then you have a long piece of fabric for your table runner. This will save, instead of having to buy the full length of the runner, you're only buying half the length where you're able to just with one seam make it enough for a whole runner and I can show you an example right here. Here is a back of a table runner and I have just one seam right here in the middle and when I'm using a, a pretty busy fabric like this nobody will ever see that that doesn't bother me at all when I have that sewn together. So let's move up to the next size up. The next size up from a table runner, we'll call that a crib size. That's probably the next step up. Now when I'm making a crib size quilt, they can be vary in size a little bit. So they can vary from, range from uh, about 32 to 40 inches, eight inches wide, up to 45 to 60, inch, 60 inches long. Now if the quilt is under 38 inches wide, then I just, get the length of the quilt, adding those six inches if I'm having it um, quilted by a long arm quilter. But if I, uh, the quilt is bigger or wider than that, wider than the 38, that's when I actually buy one and a half width. So I buy, I measure the width and I buy one and a half times that. And I do the same, I, I cut off the width, the full width, and then I have a half width of fabric left over. And I cut that on the fold and sew the short sides together. So let me show you exactly how I do that. So I have a piece here cut out, piece of fabric, or a piece of paper actually cut out, which is the approximate size 
of my, my quilt here, which is a crib size quilt. And I bought my yardage, so I measured the width and added those extra inches because if it's for a long armor. And then I bought one and a half, half times that. So I have my fabric. It's on the I'll fold it here, so this is right off the bolt. So then when I'm putting it together, I just measure the width and cut off one width. And that means I should have about a half width left over. I take that half width and actually if, if you bought extra fabric, you can just take this in half. And if you want to be more accurate, cut that like this. And then you take your half width, you cut that on the fold. So instead of having to buy two widths and having a whole lot of extra fabric over, let me just show you the difference. So here you would have, if you were to do two widths, you would have all of this fabric and then all of this. So a lot of this waste here or left over. But this way you have this whole width and then you take the two half widths, you sew them together, one seam here, and then you just add them to the bottom. So there's much less waste that way. So let's move up to the next size. So the next size would be a lap size quilt. Now lap size quilts come in many, many different sizes. There's, they vary in size so much. They can be from 45 to 65 inches wide and then anywhere between 60 and 80 inches long. So if my quilt is between 60 and 80 inches long, which is a fairly large lap size quilt, then I usually just buy two widths of the quilt and don't worry about it. Now, if my quilt is under 70 inches in length, then it's probably going to be less than 60 inches wide. And that's when I buy actually one and a half lengths. So the same way as I did the crib size, you can do one and a half lengths. You could also do, if you have a smaller lap size quilt, do the exact same thing that I did with the crib size, do one and a half widths. It just all kind of depends on those numbers. To do one and a half lengths, it, ne it needs to be under 60 inches wide. And then if it's really a lot shorter than 70 and 80, I do um, one and a half lengths or width. So let's, um, it would really just works the exact same way as I showed you with the, with the crib size quilt. So then we're moving on to the bigger sizes. So bed size quilts. And those can vary in size as well, but not as much as, as the lap size. So a twin size, let's talk about twin size first. So size range is usually about 64 to 70 inches wide. And it's about 88, between 88 and 100 inches long. Uh, now why are, is there this variation in quilt sizes? Well pattern designers, you know, we design blocks, so quilts can usually turn out a little bit kind of within a certain range. It's really hard to hit all quilt, all twin size quilts to be the exact same. And then there's also personal preference. People want a different, you know, a different drop to each, each bed size and, and so on. But when I am working with a twin size quilt, that, those, since they are usually under 70 inches wide, I feel like buying two lengths will give me too much waste. So I usually go two and a half widths. So th that means I get my two widths, which will give me about 80 inches. And then I just do a half width, which will give me at least up to 100 inches um, as before. And that's pretty much without any waste. Let's keep that graphic up there. I'm gonna talk about the full size. The size range is um, 78 to 86 wide and 88 to 100 long. So usually two lengths is fine with a full size quilt if it's under 80 inches wide. But otherwise you do the same and buy two and a half widths if it goes over 80 inches wide. Queen size, the size range also 88, between 88 and 98 and the length is 92 to 100. Again, two and a half lengths or widths unless either of those is over 100 inches. So a good thing to know, you could do either or just as long as it's not over 100. King size range is usually, king size quilts are usually about, about square, so between 100 and 112 each way. Sometimes there's a little difference between the two. So usually it, you're good with just buying either three lengths or three widths, 
whichever one of those numbers is shorter. So there it is. So I hope this gives you a little bit of an insight how you can save some money on those if you're buying yardage for backings. Now, a few other things that, that you wanna think about when you're putting your backings together. Uh, when you're piecing your large pieces together, first of all, you wanna make sure that you iron the whole pieces, especially if you're pulling pieces from your stash or coming straight from the quilt shop, make sure you iron your whole pieces make sure you you press that crease that that bolt fold out of the fabrics really well before you start piecing them now then you want to make sure to cut the salvages off so i'm going to sh show you here on the overhead camera here's a, a piece of fabric with the salvage so you want to make sure on the, the sides that you're piecing together you want to make sure you cut that salvage off and it's okay on the sides that go out towards the edge of the backing to leave those on as long as they are not pulling on your fabric. So you know sometimes when you see fabrics from the quilt shop the, the salvage is so taut that it kind of pulls the fabric together then I just trim it off. But it, I sometimes just leave that on the ends of the backing on the edges because uh, that's gonna get trimmed off anyway. But make sure you cut it anywhere you are piecing the backs together. Now, when you are piecing the units together, you also wanna make sure that the grains are going the same way. And if you use the method that I just show you, it will end up um, always this way because fabric is designed so we have stronger grains going lengthwise in the fabric and then there's a little bit weaker grains going crosswise. So when we're putting these bigger pieces together in a back, I always kinda of make sure that I have the same grain going the same way in the back. It's not so much important. It's not 100% necessary because of course you know that the quilt top is not gonna have that. And when you have smaller pieces to piece together, it's actually fine. But with larger pieces, it's just nicer and it will help your uh, quilt back lay really, really flat. Then when you're piecing your long seams together, make sure you back stitch a little bit on the ends because that will keep your fabric uh, from kind of separating on those seams because you want to make sure you press those seams open. Everywhere you are piecing these long seams for back, press the seams open because that your long arm quilter will really appreciate that when, when everything comes together and there's less thickness of where those um, seams come together. So let's talk about different materials. So I get questions a lot about using different materials for quilt backs. For example, I've, I get asked a lot about, is it okay for me to use my sheet, use a bed sheet for my back? Now, a bed sheet, I say, you know, make your own judgment. I'm not gonna tell you, I'm no quilt police, I'm not gonna tell you what is right or what is wrong. For, but for me, if you wanna do that, make sure that you are using a quality fabric. Make sure that it's um, kind of a tighter weave you know, you can know, you can, you know, on bed sheets, they, they tell you the thread count. Make sure it's been washed. And you're usually okay if you're using 100% cotton or 100% cotton sateen. Just, just check out if you're using an older bed sheet that's been used a lot. Make sure you check for spots where it has been worn out. Because if you have areas of that where it's more worn than others, that might not be the best thing for a quilt back. But other than that, I say go for it if it looks good to you and it's something you want to use. Another question is minky yeah, or uh, cuddle fabrics, those, those fuzzy polyester fabrics that are so soft. And yes, I do use those, especially for lap quilts that are going to be used just to cuddle under on the couch. Now those are a little bit tricky, so make sure first and foremost, if you're going to have it long arm quilted, make sure that your long arm quilter is okay with it and has some experience in using those because they do stretch one way and not the other. So it, there's a, a right and a wrong way to put them on the long arms. Another thing, if you do using minky or cuddle, that you wanna make sure if you have to piece those pieces together, if you're not just using a one big piece, which is actually possible now, they, they are making the extra wide ones. But if you have to piece them, make sure that that nap is going the same direction. So let me just show you on the overhead camera. So you have two pieces of minky. So you have to make sure where is that nap going. So this is going this way. And then we 
stroke it this way, you'll get a different, different texture here. And so you want to make sure that not one piece is not going this way and one the other way because then that's going to be a mismatch. You want to make sure that the nap is going the same way so that when you piece it, it will feel like the same fabric. So then um, when you are also using Minky, because it is a heavier fabric, it's quite heavy compared to a regular cotton backing fabric. Make sure that you use a little bit lighter batting. I like to use just a light poly whenever I'm using Minky because otherwise my quilts get really, really heavy. Now, some people like heavy quilts. They kind of act like weighted quilts, but I prefer to use a light poly whenever I'm using Minky for my backs. So um, let's check out some pieced backs using your leftovers and scraps. So now I wanted to show you how I put together my quilt, quilt backs from a pieced backing. So I started this because I was really, really bad at putting labels on my quilts. So I started piecing the labels into my quilt. And this is how I do that. So I get this big piece of fabric. I order it from spoonflower.com that has my logo on it. And then it has extra space around it. Each, each rectangle has extra space where I can write the information for each quilt. And I order this by the yard. And this way I can just cut out my label and then I piece it into the back because that way I know for sure that my quilt is going to have my logo on it, pieced into it, and I won't forget to put a label on later on. And that way also it makes it really hard to kind of steal my quilt because the label is permanently in there. To remove it, they'd have to ruin the quilt. So, th so it just kind of is a little bit of a security for me too, but it's fun. So I start by cutting out my label and I actually happen to have a quilt top that is ready to go to the quilter. So I actually wanted to just show you the process, how I calculated how I'm going to do this, put this backing together. So the top is 46 by 58 inches measured. So since I know it's going to go to the long arm quilter, I just added the six inches to each size. So it needs to be 52 by 64. And so normally, if you were just buying backing for this, you would probably have to do one and a half. Well, you probably have to do two lengths or one and a half widths. But since I am going to piece my backing and use some leftovers, I start with figuring my, my label unit. So I have my label. This is four and a half inches wide. And I just added strips of scraps from to each side. So it's, I know they are 52 inches. So my goal here was to just buy, use one length of yardage and then the rest of it I'm going to piece. So this was the first piece and that's four and a half inches. So that's gonna finish at four. And then I found some leftovers that I had from cutting extra extra backings from, from quilts. I saved those because they are already pieced in long, long strips. So this measures now eight and a half inches. So that will give me eight finished. And then I found another piece that is 10 and a half cut. So that will finish at 10. So those three units will give me 10 plus eight, that's 18 plus four, that's 22 inches. So if I take the 24, 22 inches off of the length, which is 64, that will give me 42 inches that I need to add. And so that's all, I, that's a perfect width of fabric. So I just, all, all the yardage I had to use was just the one width. So this is my plan. I'm going to put the yardage up top. That's gonna go here. This is gonna be my yardage. And then there's gonna be the label unit, the four, four inch unit. And then I'm going to put the print, the eight, eight inch piece, and then the 10 inch piece goes on the bottom. And that is going to be my quilt back. So I hope this gave you some insight into putting your, some, some flair into your quilt backs, using up some of your scraps, and then hopefully 
some information on how to save some money on buying yardage free bags. I hope you have some fun with Peace Quilt Bags in the future. Thank you for joining me. Thank you.